good morning friends today we are going to study physical quantity and measurement so let's start physical quantity and measurement today we are going to study number 1 measurement of density of irregular solid number 2 measurement of density of liquid and number 3 relative density physics for class 8 chapter 2 physical quantity and measurement topics are measurement of density of irregular solid measurement of density of liquids relative density now before we start let us recapitulate a few definitions first what is a physical quantity a physical quantity is a quantity which can be measured example length mass time temperature electric current light intensity intensity sorry volume density etc now measurement is the process of the comparison of the given physical quantity with the known standard quantity of the same nature measurement tells us how many times the standard quantity is contained in the given physical quantity example length of a piece of cloth 4 meter area of a rectangle 8 square meter volume of a solid 27 cubic meter now in the first case the meter which is the unit is contained four times in the length that is the physical quantity so physical quantity measurement is given by numerical value into unit now what is a standard quantity a standard quantity is the known quantity of constant magnitude it is called the unit example length the unit is meter mass kilogram time second now we come to density an object has both mass and volume it is not necessary that that an object with larger volume has a greater mass than another object with a smaller volume and vice versa for example a large piece of thermocol is generally lighter than a small piece of iron we generally use words like lighter or heavier but in science we use the word density if we take equal volumes of different substance they will have different masses now the density of a substance is defined as mass per unit volume units of density in cgs system the unit of mass is gram and the unit of volume is cubic centimeter therefore the cgs unit of density is gram per centimeter cube and in si system the unit is kg per meter cube the relation between the two 1 gram per centimeter cube is equal to 1000 kg per meter cube the working is shown below 1 gram per centimeter cube the gram is converted into kilogram by dividing by 1000 and in the denominator the 1 cm into 1 cm into 1 cm each is divided by 100 so in numerator we have 1 by 1000 kg in denominator we have 1 by 10 to the power 6 meter cube on dividing we get 1000 kg per meter cube now we come to measurement of density of solids to measure the density of a solid we need to measure both mass and volume the mass can be measured by a physical balance and the volume of a regular solid can be found by mathematical formula but in case of irregular solids there is no formula to determine the volume so the volume of an irregular solid can be determined by either using a measuring cylinder or a eureka can now we come to measurement of density of an irregular solid the mass of the solid can be found using a physical balance as shown in the figure and to find the volume we can use a measuring cylinder directly or together with a eureka can the first figure is a measuring cylinder and the second is a eureka can now <clears throat> to determine the volume of an irregular solid using a measuring cylinder some water is taken in the measuring cylinder enough to 
submerge the solid and this initial level is recorded as V1. Now the solid is tied with a thin string and slowly lowered into the cylinder without touching the walls of the cylinder. The water level rises and the final level is recorded as V2. Now the volume of the solid is V2 minus V1, final level minus initial level. Now one thing you remember, on a measuring cylinder the volume is marked in milliliter and the relation is 1 milliliter is equal to 1 centimeter cube. Now let us understand this with the following example. Here we see a measuring cylinder with initial reading 10 milliliter. The stone has, sorry, the stone has not yet entered the water. Now as the stone enters the level rises and ultimately when the stone enters fully the final reading is 14 milliliter. Initial was 10 milliliter. Therefore the volume of the irregular solid that is V2 minus V1 that is 14 milliliter minus 10 milliliter that is 4 centimeter cube. Now the mass of the object was measured by a physical balance as you can see in the figure and the mass was 35 gram. Therefore the density mass by volume that is 35 gram divided by 4 centimeter cube we get 8.75 gram per centimeter cube. Now we shall see how to determine the volume of the irregular solid using a Eureka can. Let us take the same solid and we will be taking the same solid the mass will be the same and we will see that the volume will also come out to be the same. Let us understand this with the following example. We take a Eureka can filled with water till the spout and the spout is set over the cylinder after extra water drains out of the spout. There should be no water in the measuring cylinder initially. Now the solid is slowly immersed into the water. You can see the droplets falling into the measuring cylinder and as the solid enters water we can see more droplets collecting in the measuring cylinder and ultimately the water collected is 4 milliliter or 4 centimeter cube. So volume of the solid is 4 centimeter cube. Now the density of the solid can be calculated using the formula mass by volume. Now since the solid is the same, we will be getting the same value. Measurement of density of liquids. In this, first we take the mass of an empty beaker that is M1. Next we find the mass of the beaker filled with the liquid that is M2. Then we find the mass of the liquid that is M2 minus M1. Now here we see on the second figure an empty beaker is weighed. The mass M1 is 50 gram and in the first figure the beaker is filled with the given liquid and weight. The mass M2 is 150 gram. So the mass of the liquid is 150 gram minus 50 gram. That means the mass of the empty beaker has to be subtracted. So the mass of the liquid alone is 100 gram. Now we put this liquid now into a measuring cylinder and we find in this figure that the liquid surface is concave. So we take reading of the lower meniscus. Whenever the surface is concave, we take the reading of the lower meniscus and here the value is 125 milliliter. So the volume is 125 milliliter or 125 centimeter cube. So density is, we got the value of mass as 100 grams divided by 125 centimeter cube. So density is 0 0.8 gram per centimeter cube. Now suppose we are taking a liquid and in putting in the measuring cylinder the surface is convex. In that case we take the reading of the upper meniscus and here the reading of the upper meniscus is 60 milliliter. So volume is 60 centimeter cube. So here the density will be 100 grams divided by 60 centimeter cube. That is 1.6 gram per centimeter cube. Now we have seen earlier the relation 1 gram per centimeter cube is equal to 1000 kg per meter cube or 10 to the power 3 kg per meter cube. Now remember to convert density from CGS to SI system multiply by 1000. So 0 0.8 gram per centimeter cube on converting into SI will be 800 kg per meter cube and 1.6 gram per centimeter cube 
on converting into SI will be 1600 kg per meter cube. Also remember to convert from SI to CGS divide by 1000. Now here is a table showing the density of some substances in gram per centimeter cube. In this table we see the density of water at room temperature is slightly lesser than its density at 4 degrees Celsius. At 4 degrees it is 1 gram per centimeter cube. But remember for all calculations we will take the density of water as 1 gram per centimeter cube or 1000 kg per meter cube. Now we come to relative density. Relative density of a substance is the ratio of the density of the substance to the density of water at 4 degrees Celsius. So relative density is density of substance by density of water. An example, density of iron is 7.8 gram per centimeter cube and density of water is 1 gram per centimeter cube. So the relative density of iron on dividing 7.8 gram per centimeter cube by 1 gram per centimeter cube, the units cancel out and it is 7.8. It has no units. Relative density has no units. If you have to find the density from the value of relative density in CGS, just add the unit gram per centimeter cube to the given value of relative density like water. Relative density is 1. So the density in CGS is 1 gram per centimeter cube and iron relative density is 7.8. So the density in CGS is 7.8 gram per centimeter cube. Now we can also write relative density is mass of unit volume of substance by mass of unit volume of water. That is mass of a given volume of substance by mass of equal volume of water. Now we come to relative density of liquids. To find the relative density of liquids we use relative density bottle. When the relative density bottle is filled with a liquid and stopper is inserted the excess liquid rises up and flows out of the capillary tube. This ensures that the bottle always contains a fixed volume of any liquid filled in it. Now look at the figure. In the stopper there is a fine capillary tube we can see. And now we shall see how to find relative density of a liquid. First we have to find the mass of the empty relative density bottle. Suppose that is M1 or 60 gram in this case. Then we have to fill the relative density bottle with water completely and find the mass that is M2, 120 gram. After that, we will remove the water, dry it and fill it with the unknown liquid. Now here the mass M3 is 90 gram. Now therefore the mass of the given liquid is M3 minus M1, 90 gram minus 60 gram. That 60 gram is the mass of the empty bottle. It has to be subtracted and we get the mass of the liquid alone as 30 gram. Next, in a similar manner, mass of water is M2 minus M1 that is 120 gram minus 60 gram that is 60 gram. Next, since volume of both liquid and water are same, therefore relative density of liquid is given by the formula mass of given volume of liquid divided by mass of same volume of water that is 30 gram by 60 gram that is half that is 0 0.5 so the relative density is 0 0.5 now we see here suppose the relative density is given to find the density of the liquid in CGS just put the unit so the unit 0 0.5 gram per centimeter cube and in SI multiply by 1000 it becomes 500 kg per meter cube now suppose you are asked what is the volume of the RD bottle? <clears throat> Suppose the capacity or the volume is not printed on the RD bottle. In that case, we can find its capacity by the volume of water it can hold. Because each gram of water occupies a volume of 1 cubic centimeter. Because density of water is 1 gram per centimeter cube. In this example, mass of water is 60 gram as we have calculated. Therefore, it occupies a volume of 60 centimeter cube, that means 60 milliliter. So, capacity of RD bottle is 60 milliliter. 
Now we come to a hydrometer. This is a simple hydrometer you learn to construct in the lab in 10th class. It is a device used to measure the relative density of liquids. It is graduated from top to bottom. That means the lower reading is on top and higher at the bottom. With greater value at bottom. It will float with greater part inside liquid which has lesser density. Now here we see that the hydrometer is floating at 1.0 mark in water because relative density of water is 1. Also in the given oil it is floating at 0 0.9 mark showing that the relative density of oil is 0 0.9. It floats with a greater part inside liquid of lesser relative density. A special hydrometer to measure the relative density of milk <coughs> is called a lactometer. Now the lead at the bottom helps the hydrometer to float upright. The next article is flotation and sinking. Now in the first figure we see that wood is floating on water. Average density of wood is 0 0.7 gram per centimeter cube and density of water is 1 gram per centimeter cube. In the second figure we see a egg sunk in water. Average density of egg is 1.031 gram per centimeter cube which is a little more than the density of water. Here, average density of wood is less than water and average density of egg is a little more than water. So now, flotation and sinking. When a solid is placed in a liquid, it may float or sink depending on its density. If the density of the solid is less than the density of liquid, it will float. But if the density of solid is more than the density of liquid, it will sink. Now, a solid may sink in one liquid but float in another. Example, iron sinks in water but floats in mercury. In figure you can see, first figure, an iron nut has sunk in water while the same iron nut is floating on mercury. Here density of iron is 7.8 gram per centimeter cube and density of water is 1 gram per centimeter cube. So the density of iron is more than the density of water, it sinks. In the second figure, the density of iron is less than the density of mercury which is 13.56 gram per centimeter cube. So now let's understand this with the help of a practical example. Discussing what floating and sinking. A body whose density is greater than the density of the liquid will sink and a body whose density is lesser will float. Now take the example of this egg. The density of this egg is more than the density of this water. So when I put it in water, it will sink, as you can see. Now, I am going to take out the egg and mix some salt in it. And after mixing the salt, we are going to put the egg in it. Now the salt is taking some time to dissolve. Let it dissolve it. Let the salt dissolve. When the salt will dissolve, the density of the salt water will increase. And then it will be more than the density of egg. I think it has dissolved sufficiently and now let us see what happens when I put the egg in it. Yes, now you see that the egg is floating. That is because now the density of egg is less than the density of salt water. Friends, take care and we will meet again very soon.